some editing on a session um, of Mickey the Horse here because I'm creating an album for his owner and I've been spending a lot of time removing lead ropes so I've actually come across something new that I thought I'd share with everybody. So I guess moving lead ropes is a pretty similar process to moving a leash when you're working with, uh, with dog photos. Um, so I use a combination of techniques generally. So generally the, um, the patch tool is often the best option and also the spot healing brush tool is another good way of doing it. So I'm going to start off with the patch tool and I'm just going to do it in sections. So I'm just going to start off with this section here. So I'm just selecting with a little bit of a margin around the object that I want to remove. There's my selection there. And then when I click and drag it, I'm going to try and line this edge up on the edge of the horse here. So I'm not too concerned about matching it perfectly because I've got it on content aware mode. So it should do a pretty good job. Okay, and so that has done a really good job actually. So you can almost sort of see just here where there's a little bit of a the harsh lines um, that I'll go and fix up later. Um, but for now, this is the tricky part that I want to work on. So I want to get rid of this whole gold section here of the lead rope clip. So I'm going to carefully select along the edge of where I want to move with the patch tool again. So leaving a bit of a margin around the object. Now I'm going to click and drag that to, I'm going to start by clicking and dragging it to an area that has whiskers because the problem here is the whiskers are really hard to replicate once you get rid of them. So I'm going to probably take it to there. You know, it hasn't done a bad job but I'm kind of missing some whiskers there but that's okay, I'm fine with that. So something that you'll notice here is when you use the patch tool and when you uh, go right up to the edge of another object, it tends to not quite uh, fill the area that you want to replace exactly. You tend to have little artifacts sort of left along the edges here. So I found out today that when you're using the patch tool, it acts like an actual selection as well. So I can then, keeping this area selected, go grab the clone stamp tool. Uh, smaller brush here and I can actually sample from here and go right up to this edge here and it won't actually go outside the area that is selected. Now I'm just going to deselect that so you can see an issue that happens when you do do this. So see now we've actually got a harsh edge along there and that's not something that we want so I'm going to go back to before I did all the clone stamping. And since it's a selection, you can actually modify that selection. So I'm going to go select, modify, and I'm just going to feather the edge so I don't end up with that harsh border, just by one pixel. Okay, so now when I go back to the clone stamp tool, and I get rid of all this bleedy kind of business along the edge here, as you can see, it's not doing anything. Like I can actually try and do it outside the selection and it's not going to do it, which is awesome. And here too. So now when I deselect that, you can see it's not a sharp edge anymore. It's a nice kind of smooth blended edge. So I've gotten rid of everything that I want to get rid of, but unfortunately I've also gotten rid of the whiskers. So another technique that I use to replace areas of content um, that I might have inadvertently removed or just it's part of the process. It removes it while you're trying to get rid of other things. I'm going to just select with this my normal selection tool. I've actually got a 10, um, a 10 pixel feather on it. I'm going to grab that there. I'm going to go back to my move tool and I'm actually going to copy and paste that section into a new layer by pressing command C and then command V. And have a look over in the layers here. I've got another layer with just that section on it there, and I can sort of move that around wherever I want. So I'm actually going to transform that a little bit so, so the whiskers aren't on exactly the same angle, so it tends to disrupt your view of it so that it's not quite so obvious that it's a direct copy of an area nearby. So I'm going to press Command-T to bring up my transform 
tools and I'm just going to rotate it over a little bit and kind of match it up roughly where I want to put that. So maybe about out there. Now, as you can see, the edges aren't matching up perfectly, but that's okay because I'm going to delete some of that. So I press enter to commit the transformation. Now if I turn this layer on and off a bit, I can kind of see where I've put that and also where I'm going to need to fix that up. So I'm just going to put a layer mask on that. So over in the layers palette here, I just press add layer mask. I'm going to get a brush so you can press B on the keyboard or you can just go and select the brush tool. I'm going to mask an area of this layer. So basically I'm going to need to paint using black onto that white mask area to mask it. So I'm just going to select black as the foreground colour. Reduce the size a little bit. I'm just going to turn it on and off to see where I need to do it. Okay, so I think I need to just sort of mask this bit here. And maybe just over here as well because I don't want that looking too strange. Right, so I'm just going to turn that on and off. And need a little bit more masking just, just there, just to match up the edge. Okay, I think that all matches in quite nicely. I'm just going to get a, a much larger brush here. So I'm just pressing the right square bracket key on the keyboard to increase the brush size. And I'm just going to just blend that a little bit on the edge there so it's not quite such a clear cut kind of kind of border there. So that blends that new those new whiskies in quite nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to flatten that. I tend to flatten things as it sort of reduces the file size and um, if, I've, if I've definitely finished working on something I don't really see the point of keeping it in layers if it's not something I'm going to go back and fiddle with later. So I've got a, a shortcut set up for the flatten uh, feature so I just press shift command F. You can go into your custom shortcuts and create shortcuts for whatever you like. So if you find yourself using something really frequently it's a good idea to create a keyboard shortcut for it. So that's all flattened down to the background layer now. Now I just need to do a little bit of fixing up. There's a couple of errant whiskers here that look a little bit strange. So I'm going to just grab the spot healing brush tool and I'm going to get rid of this little fragmented whisker here. And that bit there looks a bit funny. And there, a funny little bit there too. Um, other than that, I think that's actually not too bad. And maybe this one here. Because keep in mind, this is actually a really small area of the image. So when you zoom right out, you're not really going to notice it at all. Just so it doesn't look quite so obvious that it's a copy here. I'm noticing this, this curved hair here is quite obvious. I'm actually going to just remove a couple of the whiskers. Just so the eye isn't drawn to a repeating pattern. So let me grab that. So I'm actually doing something I do quite often, which is, is painting with the um, the spot healing brush tool. So instead of just clicking once to spot it, I'm actually painting along something to remove it. I find that works quite well. I might remove this one here. And maybe also this hair here. Wasn't a very good removal. I'm actually just going to grab the clone stamp tool to fix that up. It was a little bit tricky because it was right next to another hair. So and this is all very perfectionist type stuff, but um, it is definitely things that I spend my time doing because I am a perfectionist. Um. Okay, so I think that's quite good. Yeah, I don't think that's too obvious that that's what I've done. Um, the other thing that's bothering me in this image is just a little piece of grass sticking out of Mickey's mouth. So I'm just going to grab the spot healing brush tool and just draw along that. 
that should remove that quite nicely. Now there was a little bit of fixing up I need to do over here. Sometimes when you use the patch tool you get these little sharp edges. So I'm just going to grab the clone stamp tool, pretty big brush size, and just sample from nearby to go over. I'm only on 30% opacity here. So just enough to remove those harsh edges that might sort of draw your eye and make it obvious that that's what's been done there. Alrighty, here we go. So I'm just going to go back in. Oops, just seeing that. I want to get rid of as well. And that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Just tidy it up a little bit more. So I'll go back in my history so you can see the before and the final edit. So I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit more clearly. So this is the before the lead row and after with the lead row removed. Alrighty, so I hope that hopefully that's been uh, a bit helpful for you. Um, I found removing lead ropes from horses is actually a lot more tricky um, than removing leashes from dogs, mainly because of the, the whisker issue. And the lead ropes do tend to sort of hang down behind the muzzle, which makes it a bit tricky. But with a bit of perseverance and using a few different techniques, you generally can end up with a pretty good result. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.